Hello, and welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real-life American English. Today, we're going to learn to avoid some important mistakes, so let's get started. First, this is not correct. Now imagine you need a ride to the airport, and you want to ask your friend for a favor. Would you say, can you do me a favor, or can you make me a favor? This one can be tricky, but both of them are actually correct. What's the difference? Sometimes when you use the verb make, it might sound like you're asking for a bigger favor. For example, can you make me a favor and drive me to the airport at midnight? That's a really big favor. Think of it like this. If you want to make a small favor, you can say, can you do me a favor? For example, can you do me a favor and turn off the light? This is a small favor and it's not a big deal, right? But on the other hand, make is a bigger deal. Can you make me a favor and pick up my dog from the vet? This is a really big favor because you might have to take time off of work, go pick up the dog, take care of the dog, and drop him off at your friend's house. That's a really big deal. Wait. Do a favor and make a favor are both correct? No, they are not. We cannot say make a favor. We have to say do a favor. They are not both correct. No native speaker would ever say this. No native speaker would ever say make me a favor. This is never correct. Let's hear that again. What's the difference? Sometimes when you use the verb make, it might sound like you're asking for a bigger favor. For example, can you make me a favor and drive me to the airport at midnight? That's a really big favor. Think of it like this. If you want to make a small favor, you can say, can you do me a favor? But on the other hand, make is a bigger deal. Can you make me a favor and pick up my dog from the vet? This is a really big favor. Make a favor is used for bigger favors? No, it's not used for bigger favors. It's never used. You never say make a favor. You cannot say make me a favor. It's always do. Always. Never make when you talk about favors. So remember, make me a favor is never correct. Always use the verb do. Do me a favor. Example. He helped him move. So I can say he did him a favor. He did him a favor. Pronunciation, he did him a favor. We hear with him, the H is silent because it's not a stressed word. He did him. He did him a favor. I cannot say he made him a favor. No, we have to use do in the past did. He did him a favor. Let's practice. Did he do him a favor? That's right. He did him a favor. So let's talk about do versus make. Yes, sometimes do is for general actions, like you do yoga or you do exercise. And make means to create something, like you make coffee or you make a sandwich. But it doesn't always work. That's right. Unfortunately, this rule does not always work. There are exceptions. There are expressions that do not follow this rule. Example, if I do homework, I can create a new paper. I can write a paper. It's a new creation. And we use do. So it doesn't always work. It's not a general action here. Not always. This is also not correct. I chose the wrong decision of ordering something like a fish sandwich. I cannot say I chose the wrong decision. We use make. You make a decision. You don't choose a decision. You make a decision. In the past, made. So it's correct to say I made the wrong decision. You cannot say I chose the wrong decision. You don't choose a decision. You make a decision. Example. He made the wrong decision. He chose the wrong one. I can say he chose the wrong one, but I cannot say he chose the wrong decision. He made the wrong decision. Let's practice. Did he make the wrong decision? That's right. He made the wrong decision. Did he choose the wrong one? That's right, he chose the wrong one. Today we're going to avoid learning complete nonsense. So let's get started. The verb to buy can also be used in the stative form. For example, this watch buys well. I am not talking about the action of buying the watch, 
That just means that this watch is popular. This new restaurant buys well. They're always packed. This watch buys well. This restaurant buys well. Don't say this. It doesn't mean something is popular. It doesn't mean anything. It's not a stative verb. It doesn't exist. That's right. It doesn't exist. Nobody says this. If you say this to someone, they won't know what you're talking about. Don't say buys well. It doesn't mean anything. This is also not correct. However, the verb to ride can be used in a stative way, especially if you are being transported or carried. For example, the train ride was nice. Here, ride describes the state of being transported by the train, not the act of riding itself. Thanks for the ride. Oh my gosh, the car ride was terrible. If I say the train ride was nice, or thanks for the ride, or the car ride was terrible, ride in these sentences is not a state of verb. It's not a verb at all. It's a noun. These are not examples of ride as a state of verb. These are examples of ride as a noun. It's a countable noun. You can say a nice ride, or thanks for the ride. Use the article the. These are not stative verbs. Example, if I need a ride, I can ask you, hey, can you give me a ride? These are examples of ride as a noun. Let's practice. Can you give me a ride? Thanks, I appreciate it. This is also not correct. I love listening to music with my headphones. Those are not headphones. Those are earbuds. There's a clear difference. Let's look at the difference. These are earbuds. If they're Apple, you can say AirPods, because that's the brand name. And it doesn't matter if they have a wire or if they're wireless. They're still earbuds. They go inside your ear. They're called earbuds. I don't wear earbuds. What about you? Do you wear earbuds? Very good. I prefer these. These are called headphones. There's a band that goes over your head, connecting the speakers. These are called headphones, and I prefer headphones. What about you? Do you wear headphones? Very good. I think headphones are much more comfortable. I don't like things sticking inside my ear. That's not comfortable. This is also not correct. I hate when they don't have any battery. Like, they don't work right now, so I can't use them. I cannot say they don't work right now. Because it's right now, I have to use a continuous action. I have to say, they're not working right now. I cannot use the simple verb. The simple verb is for a routine. So remember, if you say right now, use a continuous verb, working. They're not working right now. They're broken. Let's practice. Are they working right now? That's right. They're not working right now. They're broken. This is also not correct. So when I say the verb to buy, that is the action of me wanting to buy a new phone. When I say the verb to buy, that is the action of me wanting to buy a new phone? This is not correct. The verb to buy does not mean I want to buy a new phone. It means I'm buying a new phone. The action to buy means you pay for something and you receive something. That's the action to buy. It's not about wanting to buy something. It's about buying something. Example, she wants to buy a new phone. She's not buying a new phone. She wants to buy a new phone. It's a different idea. Let's practice. Does she want to buy a new phone? That's right. She wants to buy a new phone. It doesn't mean she's buying it. She just wants to buy it. Now, in this example, she's buying a new phone. She's paying for it and she's receiving it. She's getting it. She's buying a new phone. Let's practice. Is she buying a new phone? That's right. She's buying a new phone. Not the same as wanting to buy a phone. This is also not correct. I will eat and drink my meal outside the restaurant. I cannot say I will eat and drink my meal. You can say I will eat my meal, but you cannot say I will eat and drink my meal. So what do you say? We use the verb have. Have is the verb we use when we want to talk about eating and drinking together. You can say I will have my meal. You can say I will have donuts. I will have coffee. See, you eat the donuts and you drink the coffee, you can use have for both. This is the verb we need. 
So I cannot say she is eating and drinking her meal, but I can say she's having her meal. She's having a meal. Let's practice. Is she having a meal? That's right. She's having a meal. And she's having breakfast. Let's practice. Is she having breakfast or lunch? That's right. She's having breakfast. I cannot say she's eating and drinking her breakfast. Use have. This is also not correct. But before that, I need to go in line and order over there. I cannot say go in line. We use a different verb. We say get. Get in line. We hear the pronunciation of T change to a fast D because it's between vowels. Not get in line, but get in line. We say get in line. We do not say go in line. Example, they need to get in line in order to buy lunch. They can't just sit down at the table and wait for someone to bring it to them. They have to get in line. Let's practice. Do they have to get in line in order to buy lunch? That's right. They need to get in line in order to buy lunch. This is also not correct. The verb to give can be an action because you are giving something to somebody. You can make it available for something else. Give doesn't mean to make it available for something else. To make it available for some other use? I'm not sure what she's talking about. Give means to give. You can say give means to make something available to somebody else, to somebody else, another person, but not for something else. You're not creating a different use for the thing. You're giving it. Give. Simple. Let's talk about give. I can say he gave her flowers. Pronunciation. He gave her flowers. You don't hear the H in her because her is not a stressed word. He gave her flowers. Give in the present, in the past, gave. He gave her flowers. Can I say he gave flowers to her? Sure, if you want to emphasize the person, but normally we don't. We say he gave her flowers. Let's practice. Did he give her flowers? That's right, he gave her flowers. It was her birthday. But if there's some confusion about the person, like, did he give the money to me or did he give the money to him? Then we say it like this. We want to emphasize the person. He didn't give the money to me. He gave the money to him. Let's practice. Did he give the money to you or did he give the money to him? That's right. He gave the money to him, not to you. But I can also say he gave him the money. You're not emphasizing the person. You're just saying what happened. He gave him the money. We hear the pronunciation. Not him, but gave him, gave him. The H in him is silent because the word's not stressed. He gave him the money. Let's practice. Did he give him the money? That's right. He gave him the money. This is also not correct. Escurir. Drain. I'm going to drain the towel. It's not correct to say drain the towel. We use the verb drain in a different way. She's not draining the towel. This is also not correct. You have to, um, the towel before hanging it. Ah, oh, I have to squeeze the towel. Squeeze, yeah. She's not squeezing the towel. She's doing something different. Let's talk about the difference. First, let's talk about squeeze. This is squeeze. But she's not squeezing the towel. She's doing this. This is different. You have to do this to remove the water. And that's the phrasal verb we're learning today. The phrasal verb is ring out. You need to ring out the towel to remove the water. Pronunciation. The W is silent, so we use the R sound. R -r ring. The ING makes the long E sound like green beans. So together, ring. And the NG makes the nasal sound. Mm -mm -mm. There's no G sound. It's not ring. Ring. I'm going to get it back if I have to ring out every one of you like a dish rag. Ring out. Not ring gout, but ring out. Link the sounds. Mm -hmm. With the ow. Ring ow. Ring out. Ring out. So I can say she needs to ring out the towel because it's wet. This is a separable phrasal verb. So if I use a pronoun like it, I have to put it in the middle. I have to say ring it out. I cannot say ring out it. I have to put it in the middle. And the pronunciation, ring it out. 
The T in it changes to a fast D because it's between vowels. Ring it out. Ring it out. So I can say, the towel is wet, so she needs to wring it out. Or I can say, she needs to wring out the towel. Let's practice. Does she need to wring out the towel? That's right, she needs to wring out the towel. The towel is wet. Does she need to wring it out? That's right, she needs to wring it out because it's wet. The phrasal verb in the present, ring out. In the past, rung out. We see the U making the short sound, like cup and up. Uh, uh. Relaxed sound. Uh, uh. R, rung, rung out. In the past, she wrung out the towel because it was wet. And if I use a pronoun, it, I have to put it in the middle. Rung it out. The towel was wet, so she wrung it out. So in the past, I can say she wrung out the towel, or I can use a pronoun and say she wrung it out. Let's practice. Did she wring out the towel? That's right, she wrung out the towel. The towel was wet. Did she wring it out? That's right, she wrung it out. Or I can change the verb to the continuous form and say ringing. Right now, in the moment, she's wringing out the towel. Or if I use the pronoun it, she's wringing it out. She's wringing it out. The towel is wet, so right now, she's wringing it out. Let's practice. Is she wringing out the towel? That's right, she's wringing out the towel. The towel is wet. Is she wringing it out? That's right, she's wringing it out right now. So remember, this is squeeze, and this is ring out. So let's talk about squeeze. How do we use the verb squeeze? Example, you can squeeze oranges to make orange juice. If you like fresh squeezed orange juice. You can squeeze the orange, or oranges, you need more than one. You can squeeze the oranges to make orange juice. Let's practice. Can you squeeze oranges to make orange juice? That's right, you can squeeze oranges to make orange juice. Or, if you want lemonade, you can squeeze lemons to make lemonade. If you want fresh squeezed lemonade. Let's practice. Can you squeeze lemons to make lemonade? That's right, you can squeeze lemons to make lemonade. Or you can squeeze somebody's hand. Maybe if you're scared. Example, the girl was scared, so she squeezed her mother's hand. Squeeze in the present, in the past, squeezed. She squeezed her mother's hand because she was scared. Let's practice. Why did she squeeze her mother's hand? That's right, she squeezed her mother's hand because she was scared. What else can you squeeze? Maybe this. This is a squeaky toy. And you give this to your dog. And when you squeeze it, or when the dog squeezes it, usually the dog bites it. That's how he squeezes it. And when you squeeze the squeaky toy, it makes a squeak. It makes that sound. That's why it's called a squeaky toy. But the verb is squeeze. You squeeze the squeaky toy. Another example, this is a stress ball, and you squeeze the stress ball to relieve your stress, to get rid of your stress, to relieve your stress. You squeeze the stress ball. Example, he's squeezing a stress ball because he wants to relieve his stress. Let's practice. Is he squeezing a stress ball? That's right, he's squeezing a stress ball. Now let's talk about drain. You cannot drain a towel, you wring out a towel. So how do we use the word drain? Well, you can drain pasta. You're removing the water. You drain pasta. We need to drain the pasta. <laughs> Example, she's draining the pasta. After you cook the pasta in water, you need to drain the pasta. 
and she's draining the pasta. Let's practice. Is she draining the pasta? That's right, she's draining the pasta. Pronunciation, we see dr together, it makes the j, j sound, like jump and juice, j, j, plus the r, j, drain. Other things you can drain, you can drain containers, like a sink. They need to drain the sink. The sink is full of water, so they need to drain the sink. Let's practice. Do they need to drain the sink? That's right, they need to drain the sink. Or a bathtub. They need to drain the bathtub. But we don't have to say bath, we can just say tub. They need to drain the tub. Or they need to drain the bathtub. The tub is full of water and they're done taking a bath, so they need to drain the tub. Let's practice. Do they need to drain the bathtub? That's right, they need to drain the bathtub. Or maybe a pool. The pool is very dirty, so they need to drain the swimming pool. They need to drain the pool. They need to remove all the water. You gotta drain the pool. Now we'll have to drain the pool. Excuse me, sir, Mr. Gatsby, I'm gonna drain the pool today before the leaves start falling in. Mr. Gannon, will you drain the pool? We'll have to drain the pool. Let's practice. Do they need to drain the pool? That's right, they need to drain the pool. Why? Why do they need to drain the pool? That's right, they need to drain the pool because the water is dirty. Or you can drain a battery. Imagine you leave the lights on in your car. Well, that will drain the battery. It will take all the energy away. We use the verb drain in this case also. If you leave your lights on, it will drain the battery. You have to turn the lights off after you stop your car. So if you leave your lights on, it will drain the battery. My car broke down and I didn't want to drain the battery and run the engine and something's wrong with the transmission, I think, so. Let's practice. If you leave your lights on, will it drain the battery? That's right, if you leave your lights on, it will drain the battery. Don't do that. Or you can drain your bank account. If you take all the money out of your bank account, we use the verb drain. You drain your bank account. Example, they bought a house and it cost a lot of money and it took all the money out of their bank account. So I can say it drained their bank account. They bought a house and it drained their bank account. Drain in the present, in the past, drained, drained. It drained their bank account. Let's practice. They bought a house. Did it drain their bank account? That's right, they bought a house and it drained their bank account. And we have another phrasal verb, drain off. We use drain off when you talk about removing oil. Usually you use a paper towel. When you fry food, you cook food in oil. And when you remove the food, you put it on a paper towel. And you drain off the oil. You drain off the excess oil or the extra oil. When it's too much, we use excess. You drain off the excess oil. You don't want too much oil on your food. So you drain it off on a paper towel. When you fry food in oil, do you need to drain off the excess oil? That's right, you need to drain off the excess oil. Or I can use the pronoun it. You need to drain it off. When you remove the food from the oil, you need to drain it off. So remember, this is the phrasal verb ring out. She's wringing out the towel. And this is squeeze. He's squeezing the ball. And this is drain. They're draining the sink. This is not correct. The cheese has gone off. It's moldy. I cannot say the cheese has gone off. Not in America. We do not say the cheese has gone off. We have the phrasal verb go off in the past went off and gone off, but it means something completely different. It means a lot of things.
and they're all completely different. So what do we say about the cheese? If the cheese is not good anymore, it's old, we say the cheese has gone bad. We do not say the cheese has gone off, not in America. So let's talk about food. If you're talking about food, food that is old, that's not good anymore, say go bad. In the past, went bad. Or the cheese has gone bad. And this works for any type of food that is old and not good. We have other words too, but they're more specific. For example, if I talk about milk, I can say the milk is spoiled. And if I talk about meat or eggs, I can say the eggs are rotten or the meat is rotten. But spoiled and rotten cannot be used for all types of food. Go bad can. So use go bad to talk about any old food that's not good anymore. The cheese went bad. Or the cheese has gone bad. Let's practice. Is the milk spoiled? That's right, the milk is spoiled. Or I can use go bad. In the past, went bad. Did the milk go bad? That's right, the milk went bad. Let's practice with rotten. Are the eggs rotten? That's right, the eggs are rotten. Or I can use go bad. In the past, went bad. Did the eggs go bad? That's right, the eggs went bad. Or if I talk about meat, I can say rotten. Is the meat rotten? That's right, the meat is rotten. Or I can use go bad. In the past, went bad. Did the meat go bad? That's right, the meat went bad. So we see go bad, in the past went bad, or has gone bad, is the best way to talk about food that is old. Because it works on any type of food. For example, the cheese. Has the cheese gone bad? That's right, the cheese has gone bad. Now let's talk about the phrasal verb go off. When do we use it? The most common things are things that make a big sound. Like an alarm. An alarm can go off. It's when it makes a sound. Or a gun. A gun can go off. It shoots the bullet. It makes a big sound and shoots the bullet. The gun fires. We say the gun goes off. In the past, the gun went off. Or if I talk about a bomb. When a bomb explodes, we use the phrasal verb go off. The bomb goes off. In the past, the bomb went off. So let's look at each one. I talk about an alarm. Any kind of alarm. A fire alarm, a smoke alarm. When it starts making sound, we say the alarm goes off. In the past, the alarm went off. Let's hear some examples of the phrasal verb go off talking about alarms. What do you mean? Well, the alarm went off in the station the same instant the camera started. I mean, it was like an alarm went off in my head, you know? Ladies and gentlemen, a smoke alarm went off in one of the rooms, but the problem has been taken care of. Our... My assistant manager, he was assaulted really badly when the alarm went off. Morning, the smoke alarm went off. Let's practice. Did the alarm go off? That's right, the alarm went off in the past. Or if it's happening right now, if I hear the sound right now, I can say the alarm is going off. Let's practice. Is the alarm going off? That's right, the alarm is going off right now. Now let's talk about guns. I can say the gun went off. That means it fired. A bullet came out. Or I can say a shot. A shot went off. Again, you're talking about a gun. Let's hear some examples of the phrasal verb go off talking about guns. I still don't think his gun went off by accident. Somebody tried to grab the gun from me in the dark and the gun went off. Look. Just the look on his face after the gun went off. Then you probably went to your little sister and said, little sister, this gun went off by accident. All of a sudden, the gun went off. And when the shotgun accidentally went off. Let's practice. Did the gun go off? That's right, the gun went off. Now let's talk about bombs. When a bomb explodes, we can use the phrasal verb go off. The bomb went off in the past. Let's hear some examples of the phrasal verb go off talking about bombs. Oh, Christ, Sam, I opened this guy up. Looked like a bomb went off inside. A tear gas bomb went off accidentally in one of the sheriff's cars. A fire. Looks like a bomb went off. You and I both know that bomb went off at the church. Before the bomb went off. That up. The dirty bomb went off at the nuclear reactor. The bomb went off in the State Department and did a lot of damage. Let's practice. Did the bomb go off?
That's right, the bomb went off. The idea, it exploded. Now let's talk about the phrasal verb go off, meaning to talk, referring to talking. For example, if we're talking and I start talking about another topic, you can say, I went off topic. I started talking about something different. We use the phrasal verb go off topic in the past went off topic. Example, they were talking about one thing, but then he started talking about something different, a different topic. So I can say he went off topic. Let's practice. Did he go off topic? That's right, he went off topic. Or I can say he went off on a tangent. That means he started talking about something not directly related to the first part of the conversation. And he's talking a lot. He's talking a lot and he's getting a little off the subject. That means he went off on a tangent. Let's hear some examples of go off on a tangent. You know, the police go off on a tangent, fly off the handle, and we're a young kid like Jay. Gets the idea you can't even trust the law to work properly. Really bad thing. You just went off on a tangent about your wife slips into it. So we see, go off on. We have two prepositions, off and on, together. Go off on a tangent. In the past, went off. Went off on a tangent. So they were talking about one thing, and then he started talking about something a little different, and he was talking and talking and talking. He went off on a tangent. Let's practice. Did he go off on a tangent? That's right, he went off on a tangent. Or if somebody suddenly gets angry and starts yelling at you, I can say, they went off on you. So again, we have go off on. They suddenly got angry and they started yelling at you. They went off on you. Example, he came home late and his wife was angry. She started yelling at him. I can say when he got home, his wife went off on him. She went off on him. She got angry and started yelling. The guy you went off on yesterday made the charts. I think you went off on the guy and buried him in the hill somewhere. Now he's Let's practice. What happened? When he got home, was his wife angry? That's right. His wife was angry. Did she go off on him? That's right, she went off on him. She got angry and started yelling at him. Other expressions we have using go off, you can say go off your medication or go off your meds. If the doctor gives you medication and you're supposed to be taking them, but then you don't take them, we use this expression. He's not taking the medicine he's supposed to. I can say he went off his meds. He went off his medication. Let's hear an example. Yeah, I must have gone up the Zola or something. Huh? Example, he's acting strange. I think he's not taking his medicine. What do you think? Do you think he went off his medication? Me too. I think he went off his medication. Or I can say meds. Do you think he went off his meds? Yeah, I think he went off his meds. He needs to start taking his medication again. I can also say go off when I talk about this expression, go off the air. If you have a radio show or a TV show and then they stop broadcasting, they're not broadcasting their show anymore, I can say they went off the air. Let's hear some examples of go off the air and went off the air. Who knows about crazy old hobos? Maybe they're like radio stations, picking up voices from people who've gone off the air. Look, Norman, we go off the air at 10 o'clock sharp. You either talk baseball or we go off the air next week. I don't... We're going to go off the air now. So, example. His favorite show went off the air. He can't watch it anymore because they don't show the show. They don't broadcast the show because it went off the air. Let's practice. Did his favorite show go off the air? That's right. His favorite show went off the air. He's sad. He can't watch it anymore. Another expression with go off. Go off without a hitch. It means an event occurs, an event happens with no problems. So, go off without a hitch and went off without a hitch. You're talking about events happening with no problems. Let's hear some examples. It went off without a hitch. I assure you tonight's program will go off without a hitch. I just want everything to go off without a hitch, and these guys are a little old-fashioned, so I was wondering if you wouldn't mind wearing a dress to the meeting. The loading in France went off without a hitch. We are now underway again. So example, they had a wedding. It was a big event and nothing bad happened. Everything went well. So I can use the expression, it went off without a hitch. Let's practice. 
Did everything go well? That's right, everything went well. Did it go off without a hitch? That's right, it went off without a hitch. So remember, if you're talking about food that's old and not good anymore, say go bad. The food went bad, or the food has gone bad. But sometimes you might hear spoiled. Example, the milk is spoiled. And sometimes you might hear rotten. The eggs are rotten, or the meat is rotten. So you cannot use go off when you talk about food. You cannot say the food went off. Because we saw that go off in the past went off and has gone off can mean many different things. But it's not used to talk about food getting old. This is not correct. Y usamos in time cuando tenemos tiempo de sobra. Por ejemplo, I'm in time for class. I can grab some coffee. I'm in time for class. I can grab some coffee is not correct. She explained in Spanish that in time means when you have extra time, when you have free time. And that's not what it means. It has a completely different meaning. She explained in Spanish and said in time means when you tiene tiempo de sobra. Sí, hablo español también. But it's not correct. It doesn't mean you have extra time. It doesn't mean you have plenty of time. It means something completely different. Y usamos in time cuando tenemos tiempo de sobra. Por ejemplo, I'm in time for class. I can grab some coffee. So first let's look at this situation. If you have extra time, if you have plenty of time, then that's what you say. She has plenty of time. She has extra time. You can say she's not running late for class. So she can grab some coffee. But don't use in time. It's not correct here. Let's practice. Does she have plenty of time? That's right, she has plenty of time. Is she running late? That's right, she's not running late. Can she grab some coffee? That's right, she can grab some coffee. So what does it mean when you say in time? In time means that you arrive at the right time for something specific. For example, he gets off work at 9.30 p.m. And he wants to watch the news, and the news starts at 10 p.m. So he wants to get home in time to watch the news. Or I can say he wants to get home in time for the news. So if you have a noun, use for, for the news, in time for the news. And if you have a verb, use to, to watch. He wants to get home in time to watch the news. He wants to get home in time for the news. Again, in time means to arrive at the right time for something specific. Let's practice. Does he want to get home in time for the news? That's right. He wants to get home in time for the news. He wants to get home at the right time for something specific. Use in time. Let's practice. Does he want to get home in time to watch the news? That's right. He wants to get home in time to watch the news. He doesn't want to be late. He wants to get there at the right time. He wants to get home at the right time. Use in time. You're just in time for the floor show, which, as you see, is on the floor. You're just in time for a little party game. You listen to me. All I have to do is find the band wherever they are, find Matthew wherever he is, and get them together in time for the final show in Thunder Bay. But we will be back in time for dinner, right? Yeah, seems I got here just in time. Well, you got here just in time. Got to get to JFK in time for the last commuter shuttle. No screams. Either I'm just in time or I'm way too late. Oh, you got here just in time. What? Close call, folks, but I think we got here just in time. Soon a cadre of police will arrive just in time to kill us as we exit the church. Are we late? Just in time. Got here just in time for your audition, William. It looks like I'm just in time for supper. Yeah, would you like? And I got here just in time to save your life. Do you think that's a coincidence? Just, just in time to say grace. You're just in time to help me with these. And it must be there in time for Christmas dinner. Maybe if we left now, we could get there in time. He planned it all so he could make the theater in time to strengthen his alibi if one became necessary. And it's nice to be here in time to see the staff prepare for such a prestigious event. 
I suppose we could say we were there in time to see, and then that he went after you. And... Hey, Patty, I'm not going for this. I'm going to have you back in your little suburban house in time to see the football game on Sunday afternoon. That she'd be here in time to get dressed on opening night. Jack, you're just in time to see O'Neill dance. What happens if you don't get there in time? You think you can get there in time? The protection team simply didn't get there in time to stop the murder. So we want to know the difference between in time and on time. So for a clear and correct explanation of the difference between in time and on time, and to practice more, keep watching. Welcome to English for Everyone. Today we're going to talk about the difference between on time and in time. We say on time when we talk about a schedule. If it's on a schedule and you're not late, you are on time. The meeting started at 9 o'clock. It's 9.05. They are on time. He is not on time. He's late. Let's practice. What time does a meeting start? The meeting starts at 9. And what time is it now? It's 9.05. Is he on time? No, he's not on time. Are they on time? Yes, they're on time. What time does the meeting start? What time is it now? Is he on time? Are they on time? Very good. It's nine o'clock. He is on time, but he is not on time. He's late. Is he on time? Yes, he's on time. Is he on time? No, he is not on time. Is he on time? Is he on time? Very good. Example, it's nine o'clock. The students are in class. They are on time. He is not on time. He is late. Let's practice. Are they on time? Yes, they're on time. Is he on time? No, he's not on time. Are they on time? Is he on time? Very good. We use in time for something specific. In time for something or in time to do something with an action, but it's always something specific. They're not eating dinner yet. They're about to eat dinner. And the grandparents come in time for dinner for this specific thing. They come in time for dinner. Did they come in time for dinner? Yes, they came in time for dinner. Did they come in time for dinner? Very good. They're not eating cake yet. They're about to eat cake. And they come in time. They come in time for cake. They got to the party in time for cake. Did they get to the party in time for cake? Yes, they got to the party in time for cake. Did they get to the party in time for cake? Very good. He went to the office to talk to his boss. He got there before his boss left. So he got there in time to talk to his boss. Did he get to the office in time to talk to his boss? Yes, he got to the office in time to talk to his boss. Did he get to the office in time to talk to his boss? Very good. We use just in time when it's exactly in time for something. Exactly in time for something or to do something. We use just. Just in time. They are about to watch the movie. And she arrives exactly in time for the movie. So she got there just in time for the movie. Did she get there in time for the movie? Yeah, she got there just in time for the movie. Did she get there in time for the movie? Very good. The meeting starts at 9 o'clock. He was stuck in traffic. He thought he would be late. But he got there exactly at nine o'clock. He got there just in time for the meeting. Was he stuck in traffic? Yes, he was stuck in traffic. Did he get there in time for the meeting? Yes, he got there just in time for the meeting. Was he stuck in traffic? Did he get there in time for the meeting? Very good. 
So remember the difference. On time is when you're not late, when it's on a schedule. And in time is for something specific. For something specific or to do something specific. Thank you for watching. And if you want to learn English in an easy and simple way, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.